am so sorry for the delay, but we are happy that you are here for this session of 3D and You. On behalf of everybody at 3D Theatricals, I want to welcome you and thank you for being here. And uh, I'm in the mood for a little fun this afternoon. So let's see what Denise has cooking for us there. Denise Paxton, take Hi, it away. Guys. Um, I'm back again this week and uh, with my lovely model D. Uh, so she'll be coming, pulling in a little closer um, on some of those moments so that you can see uh, what we're coming up with. Um, today we're going to kind of just do a little bit of, you know, it's, we're not going to do anything crazy, but we're going to do some special effects stuff. Um, and it's mostly just working with the bruise wheel. I uh, looked all over for my burn wheel and apparently it has gone on to greener pastures. So it's time for me to order a new one. So we'll do that. We'll cover that in another um, another one of these little Zoom meets at some point. But right now we're going to uh, just kind of play around with the old uh, bruise wheel and see what we can kind of come up with. So um, the one that I have available, I'm just kind of pouring through what I have. Uh, the one that I am using is the Ben Nye uh, Master Bruise Wheel. It's the FX Wheel EW4 uh, master bruise wheel. And what's cool about this is that there's a, there's a couple of uh, bruise wheels that are out there. Ben Nye has one that's a, a smaller one that's only four colors. This one is the larger wheel. And you can see I've used it quite a lot over the years, lots of digs in there from my spatula, but it's got six wheels or six colors in the wheel, which is kind of a, a really uh, useful, uh, useful piece to have in my kit. Um, I use it not just for bruises, but when I'm trying to get other colors, um, I can mix a lot of colors from this because the palette is so diverse. We've got the yellows and the greens, red. We've got a really deep maroon color over here, um, a brighter purple. I don't know if you can see it. I'm trying to get it in the light so you can see the difference. And then this one's a dark blue. So uh, we're going to use this little, uh, this little wheel today. And we're going to just kind of um, go around and I'm going to do some emphasis on D is so beautiful and yet I'm sorry, again, I made, her, I made her old a couple weeks ago and today we're gonna make her look like she's been beaten up a little bit. So <laughs> um, <laughs> if you guys wanna follow along or if you guys have, have uh, some of these pieces on hand, right on. Again, I would love to see what you guys have come up with um, when you're working on your own. Um, but let's go ahead and just jump right in. Uh, first, actually, before we go any further, I would like very much to say that if you guys are interested in special effects, there are some really great classes that you can take usually at your community colleges. Um, they usually do like a basic theater course, but they, they usually jump into little bits and pieces of special effects using not just color, but also like using like latex and nose wax and uh, dipping into prosthetics. I think at one point I might actually bring out some prosthetics and play with those at some point, but today we're just gonna do a little bit of paint and powders to, um, to give you guys some fun, uh, transformation looks. So um, what I'm going to be using is uh, some of my favorite tools. Now everybody, again, everybody do what you like. If you like to use sponges, use sponges. If you like to use brushes, use brushes. If you want to use your fingers on yourself, knock yourself out. If you're working on other people, I usually suggest using tools, but if you're not, just make sure your hands are really super sanitized or washing in between, um, doing all the, all the stuff that we need to make sure that we're not transferring bacteria back and forth between people, especially in the COVID-19 days that we live in right now. Uh, looks like, I think, let's see, where's that chat? I think Syke just said something about Cerritos College. Cerritos Community College does have great classes. Um, there's uh, one, actually one of my mentors from way back in the day used to teach at Cerritos College. Um, she has since passed away, but she was really great. Um, and they have a whole, an incredible squad of teachers over there um, who are still uh, leading the way in makeup and hair and all the fun stuff that come along with theater. So anyway, so here's uh, where we're going. Um, back to the, how do I close this out? I don't know. You guys, I'm still not great at the Zooms. Um, <laughs> I haven't figured it all out yet, but I'm, I'm working on it. Um, I don't know. I don't know what I did. I don't know. What are you trying to do? I don't know. I, I'm trying to close the chat thing because I, I looked and saw what's, what psych wrote, but you know, it's fine. It, it doesn't matter. I'm, I'm just going to keep going. Okay. Right. <laughs> we're, we're living our lives. All right. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get my spatula out because remember, I don't double dip into my product. So that's why my 
my little palette here has all of these little dig marks in it. I'm sure you can see. Let's see. I don't know how to make this. I don't know what I did. Oh, oh, that's better. That's totally fine. All I see is Gigi. Is that just me? Do you guys all see Gigi or do you guys see me in your main screen? I don't know. All right. It's cool. Um, all right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, take my little palette here, my trusty palette uh, knife, and I'm going to scoop out a couple of colors. I'm going to go with the lightest color first, um, and I'm going to get some of this yellow. I'm going to put it on the back of my hand. You can also use a palette if you like. Um, I'm going to get some green. Put that next to it. Uh, definitely going to use some of this, uh, this dark maroon color down here. Pop that in here. Teeny bit of purple. I don't like to use the purple all that much. Um, I do like to use the blue. So I basically just kind of put a little bit of a, a color palette. And it's it's kind of like all the colors of the rainbow. Some are a little bit dulled out, which is okay. Um, because that's the, the colors of bruises. What I would recommend, if you're really into, like I said, uh, community colleges, great courses. Uh, one of the things that they will ask you to do is to create a morgue. Um, for those of you who don't know what that is, it's, a, it's basically going and finding references. You can do, um, these days you can do a digital morgue. Um, I personally have a book, which I don't have on me. I think it's in storage somewhere. Um, but but um, basically it has a, it's, it's like a photo album of all the different kinds of real references um, of wounds and bruises and injuries and that sort of thing so that you can draw from. Because although we can sit here and go, oh yeah, I want to make a pretty bruise and whatever, if it doesn't have any basis in real life, then it's not going to look as realistic and you're going to be struggling to recreate some, to create something that is believable, especially for film. Mostly, like I said, we're doing most of the stuff for theater, so everything's kind of at a distance, which is totally fine. Um, but definitely start looking at references of real bruises. Anytime somebody has a really good bruise, I'm like, um, can I, can I take a picture of that? And they always look at me like I'm a little bit crazy. Totally okay. Just go with it. Take pictures. Um, like I said, you can do a digital one. You can put it in your phone or you can put it on your iPad or, you know, put it on Pinterest or whatever it is. However you like to click, uh, collect your, your photos. Um, but I, again, I like to have print because if I'm in a space where I need to go flip through something and I, I'm like, oh, well, I need to get a, a, a burn and I have the perfect burn, but if I don't have internet access, I'm in a little bit of trouble. It's on my iPad, great, but what if my battery dies? I don't know. Print sometimes is still your best friend. So anyway, um, because I don't have a morgue in front of me, I'm going to go based off of some references of stuff that I have done in the past um, and uh, some some bruises that I have personally had. Uh, have you guys ever walked into a door? Like, like you just don't see it. You just like walk in like right, right here. Uh, super fun. Um, also bruises like on the arms and legs and that sort of thing, they, they tend to have different kinds of coloration. Um, you also need to know what how, how old is your bruise? Um, bruises, when initially when you get them, they don't look black and blue and purple unless it's, a, unless it's in a spot that has very little fat content. So something like right here on the bridge of your nose, that's gonna probably turn a little bit darker sooner than something that's here on your cheek, okay? Um, as bruises start to age and they start to go away, that blue and purple and red all start to kind of fade out. Uh, so you start ending up with like these greens and yellows as they start to fade away, as they start to heal. So um, knowing the age of your bruise is really important. So if somebody just got a black eye, you're not going to have all that beautiful, gorgeous blue and dark purple uh, bruising. You're going to have something, you're probably going to have a little bit of redness and irritation. You're going to have swelling. Um, so we're going to, I'm going to show you how to do a little bit of that too, which is kind of fun uh, because we're going to create some depth with our bruises. So um, I personally like to use a fluffy brush to make my bruises. Some people like to use sponges. Um, if you have these, I, I love me some latex sponges. I usually get mine at Nigel's or Friends. Um, sponges are super great and the best part about them is that you can change the shape of them. So in this case, I'm just going to show you what you can do. You can take and just start tearing off pieces of your, of your sponge to make it a little bit rounder and it's going to give you a little bit of texture. I don't know if you guys can see that, but that's really good for when you're trying to do uh, some stippling, which I'll show you guys uh, a little bit later, but I'm just going to kind of prep this out by just pulling out some pieces. Um, of the sponge here. So it's got a nice bumpy, lumpy texture that is variegated. Um, 
what I, I like to use, I use like I like to use a brush that's kind of like this. Uh, this one here is a Delium 777. Um, it's fluffy and it's uh, the bristles are not super stiff and, and but yet they're not super floppy. So they give us a little bit of um, I get a little bit of bounce uh, when I'm using like a stipple motion. So I really kind of like brushes like these. So I've got two of these brushes out here uh, for now. I also have, if I'm doing, um, in the past I've done these events called Every 15 Minutes. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of that, but they're junk driving rec recreations for high school. And sometimes you gotta do a lot of stuff in a really short amount of time. And so if I'm doing something that requires a lot more coverage and I have to do a lot of bruising, I'll get one of these bigger round fluffy brushes. This one is a Delium 939. Um, this helps me do a lot more coverage really quickly. So um, what I'm going to do is we're going to start with do, by doing like a, a nice simple black eye. So uh, apparently Dee has been in a little trouble lately and has been um, causing some fights and somebody's, uh, somebody gave her a little pop in the eye. So we're going to take, we're going to do a little bit of uh, a bruise on this eye. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, <clears throat> first things first is we're going to talk about like there, there's going to be some swelling. So in this case, this, pro this bruise is probably going to be I don't know, about three, maybe three hours old or so. So we now, at this point, we've kind of got some blood filling up into the areas and we're gonna start seeing that more than just redness and irritation, we're gonna actually start seeing some of that bruise come, come through. So what I'm gonna do is first, we're gonna do a little bit of the swelling. And I, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little bit of this yellow. Now, even though yellow is usually towards the end of a bruise, it's the yellow and green tones that are towards the end of an age of a bruise. Um, we're going to use that yellow to create the swelled effect on her cheek. Um, so I'm just going to go in and honestly, I don't know if you can see here, but I, I dipped into my yellow and I barely have any yellow on my brush. Kind of hard to see because it's, I literally have so little, um, but I'm going in with my lightest color first, just kind of loading up my brush and I'm going to do right here on the side. We're going to puff that up a little bit. And if you can see, I'm just doing a stipple motion. Rather than like painting it in, just stipple, lightly stipple. Because what happens is when, we're, when our skin gets irritated or swells, it doesn't all swell at the same time. It is, nothing looks uniform. That's something that's also really important to remember is that when you're doing bruises or scratches or burns or whatever the case may be, unless it's a specific, like something got branded or um, unless it's something that's specific to a type of shape, um, try to give it a little bit of variegation so it's not all the same. Nothing should look completely uniform. Hardly ever does anything bruise exactly the same and symmetrical this way or this way, horizontally or vertically. Those are the words I'm looking for. So you want to st you want to stipple your color on. And we're going to do this like in the little, this is like the little fatty area that we have right above our cheekbone. We're going to make that stand out just a little bit. Okay, and you can kind of see I'm just stifling kind of in a circular-ish motion and a pattern. So that way we just have a little bit of swelling. I don't know, you probably can't see that really well right now. That, that might help. I don't know, you guys, I'm, I'm doing the best I can with the lighting that we have. Um, we'll do a little bit there. And I'm just gonna give a little bit of swelling here as well, just a teeny bit. Because again, there's not a lot of fat tissue here in our foreheads, but right here above the eyebrow, usually there's just a teeny tiny bit. Okay. Yes. Yes. Uh, one second. Our dog is chewing on a sock that he's not supposed to be talking, chewing on. Hold on. This is real life, folks. All right, so we're doing some, we're doing the, the uh, highlight, which is a little bit of yellow. And again, we're not doing a, a solid layer of yellow. It's just stipple lightly over the top. So that we show, so we're basically what we're doing right now is we're trying to create a little bit of depth, okay? So I've got it right here above and right here on the corner of the cheek. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take that same brush, just kind of brush off the excess, because I didn't really have a lot of color on there anyway. And I'm gonna go in with, Let's see, it's hard to tell, this burgundy color. So it's, it's a red, warm color. And again, I'm gonna just dip in 
And when I, when I load my brush, you can see that I'm tapping and I'm gonna move over here and I'm gonna tap off some of the excess because I don't want a solid color. I want a dry brush and stipple that on. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go, we're gonna go around this cheek area so that we can show the swelling and redness. And again, you can see I'm just doing this stipple motion. And I'm actually, and as I'm doing this, because this red, the, the red is really, it really just pops forward. Um, anything that's 3D, if it's a warm color, it's gonna pop forward. And if it's a darker or cooler color, it's gonna uh, fall back. That's why when you have 3D glasses, you have one that's red and one that's blue. Red pops forward, blue draws back. Didn't know that? I never knew that. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. how that works. Hey, you learn something new every day. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm actually turning my brush because if you guys can see here, when you turn the brush, it actually changes the angle of the brush. So it's not all the same thing. I'm actually turning so that way the, the color that I lay down isn't going to be static. It's going to be changing every single time I move. And because I'm changing the way it, it lays out, it also looks like the capillaries underneath are broken. Because that's also what's going to happen is the, when, when you bruise the skin underneath, things start to bust and break. So it's going to be your capillaries underneath are going to be breaking. And the, the blood is going to pool and congeal differently in each spot based on how, where you were hit and what your skin, what the padding underneath your skin is set up as. And everybody's different. So I'm just spinning my brush a little bit as I go. You wanna lean in so they can see that? And it looks like we're in a shadow. Do you guys see? So it's kind of, it's kind of like this little C shape around it. Okay. All right. Can you turn my body that way? Uh, yeah, you can do that a little bit. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just put a little bit more over here. And it's always good to take a second and take a step and look back to see what it looks like from a little bit of a distance. Um, I, a lot of people <laughs> laugh at me when they're sitting in the chair because I do this weird look, which I don't think I've ever seen myself do it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to do it now. Um, oh my gosh, um, <laughs> the dog, it's, it's funny. Anyway, um, I do this thing where I kind of like blur everything out with my eyes so I don't have to literally walk across the room. And I kind of just like look at my subject and kind of do this like weird, like squinty, I think. <laughs> It doesn't really make any sense. But remember that when you're working on stage, you need to be able to see what it looks like from a distance. If all I see is just a ring, then I haven't really done my job because we need to actually show a little bit of depth. So I'm looking at it now on the screen. I can see that it's that we've got some variegation around the edges, that it doesn't look just like I painted something on just real quick. I'm actually give it, giving it a nice soft feather. Um, I'm gonna go in just a little bit more. And you can see that I'm layering on the color a little bit more in some places so that way it does create an illusion of depth. Okay, um, let's see over on this side towards me, I'm going to do um, in this area, she's not going to have as much of the um, of the capillary broken capillaries because again, there's not um, there's not that much for it. Uh, there's not enough fatty tissue underneath for it to swell up like that. So I'm just gonna do a little bit of redness and irritation kind of around the edges. Just so that we, it shows that there's a wound there. So you wanna lean in so they can see that. I don't know if you can turn this way a little bit. I don't know, it's, it's, it's kind of hard to see you guys, I'm sorry. All right, turn that way a little more. Okay, great. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna layer in some of the darker colors. So not only does she have a little bit of bruise here, we're also gonna uh, come in and we're gonna actually deepen that socket. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump in here with this, um, with this dark blue color. I'm just going right in and I'm gonna load it up a little bit and we're gonna stipple starting towards me, uh, starting at the, at the corner of her eye and we're gonna go down just a little bit. 
And I'm doing this very lightly to get in to that pocket. Okay, I don't, can you guys see that? Turn that way just a little bit. Very lightly. If you go to, um, if you layer on too much color, it's gonna be really difficult for you to blend that out. So start light and then build your color up as you go, okay? A lot of the time what happens with people with, uh, with black eyes is also the pocket that's right underneath the eye is something that also swells up. So we're gonna um, emphasize that as well. So actually, can I have you open and look up? P.S. Oh, go ahead and relax for a second. Um, whenever you're working underneath somebody's eyes, one of the best things to tell them to do is to open their eyes and to look up. Now, most of the time they're gonna do this. And that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for them to look up just with their eyes. And if you can get them a focal point somewhere on the ceiling and have them count to 20, that will also help because people are so concerned about whether or not you're gonna poke them in the eye. If you can give them something to do, that is really helpful for them. Another trick is you can also tell them to stick their, their tongue to the top of their mouth and they'll be concentrating on that instead of what you're doing around their eye. All right, so look up please. So I don't know if you guys can see, but as I'm doing this, I'm lightly stippling. And as I make my way out towards the edge of the eye, I'm actually doing a little bit thinner of a line and a little bit lighter of a color. Okay, keep going here. It's almost like we're doing like two lines and filling that area up with this blue. Okay. Very light, very light. How does it feel when I'm touching you with the brush? Um, it's very, very light. Okay, so it's also important to remember that this part of our eye right here underneath as well as right around the top of the lid, those are some of the thinnest areas of skin that we have on our body. So when we're, we're working in those areas, it's really important that we're not like digging into somebody else or digging in on your own. Because I know a lot of people, I think I've talked about this before, when we do eyeliner, a lot of people will take their finger and they'll like stretch their, don't do that because that area is, if you keep stretching that out, it's not going to go back to where it is. You only have so much elasticity in your skin. We wanna keep that nice and tight for, the, for all of our lives. So please be careful when, you, when you're working on anywhere in the eye that you do gently, lightly, and try not to pull anything unless you absolutely have to. And those cases are very few and far between. Okay. So we've got this really nice blue in here. And can you see that? Yeah, there we go. I am sweating. It's really warm in here right now. I don't know. Why. It's because we had all the windows shut because of the jackhammer. That's right. They're doing construction across the street. So normally you have the windows open, we get a nice breeze, but um, we had to close it out for the sake of this today. All right. So a little bit more in here. Go a little bit deeper. Actually, I'm going to dip into my purple color my purple color down here. And I'm gonna add in a little bit of that purple into the eye area. And actually, I'm kind of just moving along and putting a little bit here and there. I don't want, I don't want it to just turn purple completely. Um, a silly question. Yeah. So if I was beginning my career in theater as an artist, as an actor, mm -hmm. and I was as accident prone as I am uh -huh. with regularly getting bruises and stuff, would it be helpful if that's the type of part that I'm interested in playing in developing sort of a lookbook of myself with my own actual bruises? both to help myself with my makeup and a makeup artist that I would go see? Absolutely, because if you can show somebody else, if you already have pictures of yourself with bruises, replicate those because that's a natural process. We, the, more, the more you have to arm yourself, go for it. If you, can, if you can show like, this is where I know where this bruise went and this is how I did this, yeah, jump on that. Um, bruises on yourself are very helpful because you can also see the progress 
of what it's like when you initially got it versus how it's healed. So yeah, absolutely. All right, I'm also gonna take a little bit of this blue and I'm gonna bring it over here into this one, into some of those areas where we would have popped up a little bit more of those broken capillaries. And again, I'm just twisting my brush as I lightly stipple in the color so I can pull in some asymmetrical shapes. And it makes each, it makes it look like a little bit more has happened in certain areas. And like I said, that yellow really pops it through um, and it gives it that depth that we're looking for. I'm gonna do a little bit over here too. I don't actually want to do too much on this one. That was gonna just be more a little bit of a, a smaller bruise. Okay, and then as you close your eyes, I'm gonna go right here into the corner of your eye. We're gonna go up over the lid. So usually what, what happens, and again, every bruise is different, so go with it. Um, on a lot of times what'll happen is you'll actually get a bruise line in the crease rather than just on the lid. So we're just gonna go, and so normally like when you're doing a cut crease for yourself, you start from the outer corner and work your way in. It's actually gonna be kind of the opposite. We're gonna work our way in going into the crease. And the darker blue is going to be the darkest color that you use. So I usually like to layer that in with some of the purple. And then I'm going to just take that up just a little bit towards the bridge of the nose. Not a lot. I'm actually going to dip back into my maroon color and pull a little bit of that red out towards the bridge. And if you wanted to make it look like her nose was broken, you can go even further with that red and just pull it across. So we're gonna have a nice little hmm, break right here. <laughs> wow, Dee, I don't know what <laughs> kind of ball, bar room brawl you jumped in on, but Girl, you did it. The other guy. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Okay. And what I like to do is I usually like to, instead of just doing one line across, I kind of like to do one and a half, um, which again, kind of breaks it up a little bit because nothing is ever just, I mean, again, unless you got hit by something or if it was a specific shape that is indented, more variegation is better. So we're going to get in on going back in with a little bit of the purple and just a little bit of the blue to give me some depth. Remember that blue recedes, so that's gonna make everything look a little bit deeper. We'll pull a little bit down here and over onto that side. All right, why don't we, why don't you go ahead and get up a little closer so they can see, and I'll see if I can figure out how to get that light Better. Is that better? Looks like it might be. Yeah, that's a lot better. So if you can see right here on her cheek, it looks like it's actually protruding and it's swollen. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And turn towards the camera a little bit more. Awesome. Okay. Now, I know that there is a tendency for a lot of oops, it's okay. <laughs> Jump back up I there. Almost died. <laughs> um, there's a tendency to like keep going and add more and more and more. Sometimes a little less is more. Uh, we don't always need to, you don't need to gild the lily. Like this is enough to show, like, hey, we've got a thing happening here. Um, if you want to give a little bit of um, if we want to show more somewhere else, what I'd probably do is when I look like this on this side, I'd probably do a little bit of a, um, a bruise on her lip to make it look like her lip is swollen. So I'm going to do that real quick. I'm going to go back in. I'm going to start with the, the maroon color and actually just open your mouth just a little bit. And there's this spot right here that actually ends up getting pretty nice and swollen whenever somebody gets a fat lip. 
It's usually right here. Turn this way a little. There we go. Okay, lightly with that maroon, I'm going to go in a little bit more. And again, I'm just twisting and turning my brush as I go. Just kind of creating like this little, like a downturn of the lip. I'm going to pull that out just a little. I'm going to go back in with my maroon and go a couple of spots spinning around to get a couple of those little broken capillaries. And then I'm going to go in with the blue just a teeny bit as well. Tap that in there a little. And then with a clean brush, because I've been using, I've been using the same brush with the darker colors, I'm going to go with the clean brush, go back in with a little bit of yellow and pop that up just against there. And then what you can do is you can also take your color, uh, probably the maroon is probably the better color to go with. And we're gonna actually put it on the lip to show, to integrate the lip and the, act and the underneath of the lip together. There really isn't a huge distinction between the two. That's me. Um, something else to remember, this is not having to do with special effects, it's just working with other people. Um, remember that when you're working on someone, they're a person, they're a human being. And so um, having open communication between you and the person you're working on is really important. Um, if you need them to move, ask them to move. Um, don't, I usually try to lean again, or try not to say left and right, like turn to your left or turn to your right, because I get confused because working in theater, Right is left, left is right. I don't know where I'm going. So I usually say turn towards me or away from me. Um, sometimes I'll, I will tap their shoulder and say turn towards my hand or turn to, towards my hand this way. Um, it's always best to ask them to do something rather than just taking their face and doing this. Is that annoying? <laughs> is it annoying? <laughs> yeah, people don't like that. You're already touching their face an awful lot. So it's best that you just have that communication with them and they, then they're gonna trust you because they know that you're not gonna be pushing around. I have seen so many times, this is actually, and I just saw this up when somebody was cutting somebody's hair the other day, um, this, hand on the head, moving them around. <sighs> if somebody did that to me, I'd probably lose my mind. Um, it's best to have the communication, talk to your person, ask them to move one direction towards me, away from me, look up, look down, et cetera, rather than actually just pushing their face around. All right, let's see, where was I at? <laughs> okay. Right in here. I was adding to the lip. So it integrates both of those. And then I think what I'll do also is bring in some of that, more of that maroon, and we're going to do it right here at the top. So again, it integrates the lip with that spot, and it shows as swollen. You want to show them what that looks like? A little closer. Let's see, turn towards me a little. Oh, it almost kind of gives me um, some fan of the opera vibes <laughs> with the mask and like the <laughs> lip kind of hanging out there. All right. Um, I, I'm going to show you a couple more things because we only have a little bit more time. Um, I'm actually going to go in with the sponge and with my fluffy brush to show you guys some, some like bruising down the neck just so that you guys can see. Bruising also doesn't all, all just happen in one place. Sometimes bruising happens in this, this crazy like, um, I don't, I don't have a good word for it, but like a, like a crackle pattern. That's model. Modeled, yeah, definitely modeled, <laughs> but like in this kind of zigzaggy kind of pattern. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in with, um, with my maroon color. I usually start with that color, especially if I'm going to be doing a lot of surface area. And I jump in with my brush and let's do it. Yeah, we'll just do it on this side. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of create like a, almost like a vein pattern, but not. So it's gonna be like a, like a crazy roadmap is kind of what I'm looking at. So I'm gonna start here. And as you see, I'm just kind of twisting and turning my brush as I make my little roadmap. And what I'm doing is I'm making sure to keep spaces, open spaces in between the lines. So again, it's like doing veins, but not. Um, 
So I'm keeping some open spaces so that it looks like there is some swelling as well as the redness and it's not just one static bruise. Can you guys see that? Yeah, okay, yeah, we can see a little bit. Great, cool, cool, cool. Okay, so with my, no, I'm gonna keep it on this side. There we go. And then I'm gonna go in with a little bit more heavy hand and actually put in those broken capillary looks. And again, I spin my brush around a little bit. Sometimes I go on just the, just the tip of it and then I go more towards the, the flatter side. So that way we're using all of the brush to get our shapes down. And then we'll just have that go up into this area, some swelling there. I'm gonna go in with my dark blue and just emphasize some of those little cracks in those little areas where they connect so it looks a little deeper. That gives us our depth. It's almost like a honeycomb. That's the word I want, but not regular and uniform like a honeycomb. That's the word I was thinking of. I was thinking waffle, but that wasn't quite what I wanted. Okay, there we go. And with our sponge, so remember I ripped up that sponge to give it some texture. We can also use that sponge to go in and bring in some of that texture too. So what I'm doing is I'm going into the dark blue and if you can see the color that's on the sponge, it's variegated. So it's gonna give me almost like a stamp pattern. And again, I'm just twisting and turning so nothing is uniform and nothing is the same on purpose because nothing ever shows up that way. Okay, I'm gonna go with a little bit of purple and also dip back into my maroon, so you can see how we get some of that modeling. Also, if you have a stipple sponge, this is gonna give you another, another texture to work with. It's actually gonna be a smaller texture. Actually, kind of the bruise that we're doing is the same texture as the stipple sponge, just on a grander scale. So I'm gonna use my stipple sponge to get me some more precise capillary breakage. And again, always twisting, always turning, so you don't have, it doesn't look like a rubber stamp just went across everything. Okay, so we've got some fun little bruises. Then just because I'm, I like to get in there with a little bit more detail, I'm gonna go back in with my smaller brush and just kind of stamp out a couple of spots that I want to be a little deeper with my maroon and my blue. And how, again, how does that feel on your neck? It tickles. It tickles. Yeah, also be mindful of that. We don't want to just like tickle them <laughs> if they're uncomfortable. <laughs> but you know, sometimes you just got to get the job done. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right, so you can take a look at that and pull that in there. So you can see we've got, so, so as I'm looking at this, it almost looks like there's an eight in there. So if we had a little bit more time, I would probably go back and break that up just a little bit by probably placing um, some more, uh, breaking up that little eight figure, uh, just to variegate it a little bit. Again, this is kind of why you have to take a step back and look at your work because you're like, from the stage, people are gonna be like, why does she have the number eight on her neck? <laughs> <laughs> so we don't want that. We don't want people to think that. So give yourself, it, and it's okay, because like you get real close, you know, oh, this looks so good. And then you're like, eh, okay, okay. Well, then you go back and fix it. It's totally doable. Um, in order to seal these looks in, we're gonna go back to our old regular setup of our Ben Nye powder. We take our powder puff, dip it into the powder, and then we do this wonderful uh, taco. Yes taco motion. I'm doing it over my, um, my powder container um, rather than doing it in front of you guys um, because I don't want to get powder all over the place. So right now my powder is inside my puff and then we're just going to go in and we're going to press. You can tap that in, press that in, 
we can go here. And again, be gentle. We're dealing with somebody's face here. I don't want to give her real bruises. Or do I? They'll never be able to tell from the audience. <laughs> so you pat that in gently. And then once you've got the powder on, just go ahead and just kind of get a nice push press. So that way it seals in nicely. And then we're going to use a fluffy brush. I'm going to use one of these right now. Just fluffy. This one is a Delium 960. Just use that to gently dust off the powder. And do you, did you notice where I started uh, dusting the powder from? The top down. Top down. Why do we do that? Gravity. Gravity's a thing. You start down here, and then I knock all the powder. For, then you try to do a double work. Start at the top. Work your way down. I didn't do your mouth. I just realized. Forgot about that side. <laughs> All right, we're working our way down. There we go. All right, we got bruises. How fun is that? So yeah, we've got some uh, we got some bruises. Just using just using the colors in your bruise wheel. Just one more real quick before we go, because I know it's two forty six and we're gonna wrap up. And I see that we've got the little messages about uh, going on vacay because it's Memorial Weekend. Um, when you're doing an older bruise that's healing, we're gonna go in and use the yellow and the green. So let's say I've got one over here on this side, just, just right here on her, on her eye. I'm using the yellow to stipple that color in. And I'm not doing a solid color, just kind of variegating. Around the edges, you're gonna go in with that bright green color, which it seems kind of weird, but yeah, it's the bruises turn green. I'm gonna use that green and kind of go around the edges. This is not generally something that you're gonna do for stage because most people can't see this color combo from the stage. It's usually something that you do for like photos or for film um, or for an in-person um, look, but it is available to you and you should know how to do it. Um, like I said, just that yellow and green for that aged bruise. And again, I kind of pull it out a little bit mostly yellow on the inside, green more towards the edges. And then I also go in with a little bit of my maroon and just kind of pop that in here towards the center along the top and side, just to give it a little bit more color. Okay, I don't know if you guys can see that or not. Um, first rule about Fight Club. We don't talk about, we don't fight, talk about fight club. It's true. It's true. So yeah, so now we got some bruises. You've got some more recent bruises. You've got some aged bruises. Um, you can go in with a little bit of blood if you really want to start getting, uh, getting fancy. Uh, I didn't bring blood with me this time because I feel like that's another something that we can cover on another day. But yeah, you could definitely, um, <laughs> you could definitely uh, use some blood to kind of uh, use some areas where maybe it's actually a, a wound inside the bruise. Uh, whatever the case may be. So that's playing with our master bruise wheel from Ben Nye. Anybody have any questions? Wow. I mean, they're gorgeous bruises, but oh my God, girl. Yeah. Does anybody have any questions? Let's open it up if you do. Well, or have you guys time? done any bruises or any kind of special effects on any shows or any projects that you guys have worked on? No? I, just, I, think I think everybody's just kind of going <laughs> over the bruises. They look fabulous. Oh, thank okay. you. Hey, Terry. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, I highly recommend, like, take some time and, like, get out the Googles and start searching for bruises and see what kind of um, amazing pieces you can find. Um, learning about the, the facial structure and the skeletal muscular structure um, will really help you define those even further for a more realistic look. But yeah, this is this is a basic, start playing with the color. I mean, and if you don't have this cream wheel, you can use eyeshadows to play with a little bit more. Just try to stay away from things that have like shimmer and glitter. Uh, that, <laughs> I mean, unless you're a Twilight uh, vampire. Uh, <laughs> 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 um, unless you're into that sort of thing, I highly recommend staying with more of the matte or velvet colors um, to play with because you can absolutely do these looks not just with cream but also with powder. Um, lipstick is also another great way to 
uh, use some color if you don't have these particular uh, bruise wheels. But um, yeah, you can you can get in there. You can play with a lot of stuff. Looks like Psych. Do you have a question? Go ahead. No? I, I have a comment. Yeah. Um, when I was back in high school, I was boarding class and I messed around with some sparkly eyeshadow and I made a fake bruise and it was like it was clearly sparkly but um I still managed to scare my mom um she actually she thought it was a burn I had some clear nail polish and I painted it over it and then once it dried I like twisted my arm and it crackled and it made it look all burned yeah that's almost like um there's a, a product called collodion and it actually, if you put it on your skin, it shrinks the skin. So it's actually a really good, um, oh. yeah, it's a really cool product to use if you're trying to make a scar or make it look like a, a, a scar that's been there for quite some time. But yeah, nail polish is also something that you can, I wouldn't recommend that because reasons, um, but yeah, I could see how that would definitely freak your mom out. <laughs> ah, <laughs> children, you. don't we love that when they come home with new exciting things? I, I always love the pictures from my sister with the kids coming home from OSHA with their, their big gashes in their head and all these things that they learned to do. And it, blaming me, of course, being the anti-mame that I am. Oh, wait, Denise, what happened to you? I don't know. Oh, I'm sorry, you were muted. She muted me. <laughs> I would never do that on purpose. Sorry. <laughs> well, listen, we are at the end of our session time. Um, Denise, thank you so, so much. Thanks for we having me. We are so grateful. And oh my gosh, you guys, you're good thing you're at St. Home Order. You don't want to go out in public looking like that. <laughs> There'd be a lot of questions. <laughs> a lot of questions. I knew nothing, saw nothing, saw nothing. So anyway, you guys, thank you so much. Just a reminder, Monday is Memorial Day and we will be 